So for our last four camping trips, we've had to get by with no AC power to our outlets. For some reason, the GFCI would keep tripping. Nothing connected to the outlets. In one or two minutes, pop. This one GFCI happens to be connected to every single outlet in this van, both inside and out. A major inconvenience. Fortunately, there are separate circuits for the stovetop and the microwave. So we're able to cook. The refrigerator worked because it runs on 12 volt DC. Hot water and the furnace can be run on LP. So the big inconvenience was no TV, no coffee maker, toaster, no charging of our iPhones or other devices. That's a big inconvenience. We got by. Here we are camped at Salt Creek Campground. I checked all of the AC outlets, made sure there was nothing connected or anything obvious as far as damage goes. I connected both the shore power and the Volta inverter. Still, the GFCI trip. I checked the main circuit breaker and the one for the AC outlets. They were all on. So it's something in between the circuit breaker panel and the GFCI outlet. Could be the GFC outlet. That's what I narrowed it down to. Let's hope that solves the problem. I'm gonna power it up and see if it works. Turn all the circuit breakers back on. Turn on the inverter. Uh-oh. It tripped immediately. Well, that's frustrating. I'll reset it and see if it will trip again. Three minutes, 24 seconds. Did what I could. Now I have to consult with the pros. So minutes after I installed the new GFCI and it again tripped, I was frustrated and I thought, okay, let me just put it back in the box and take it to Eric's RV for analysis and repair. Well, in the process, as I was starting to feed it in, I noticed the twist on wire connector, just one in there. And I thought, well, is it possible there's something wrong with the connection of the wires? I twisted it off and lo and behold, one of the wires was extended quite a bit further than the other three. They were all touching each other, but maybe in the process of twisting it back on, it would not clamp down on the whole group of wires properly, and that would cause the fault. Well, why not try to see if I can fix it simply by rearranging the wires? That's what it should look like. Nice and tight. So I took the longest wire, pulled it down, lined them all up to be the same, twisted back on the connector, turned on the power, and it did not trip. Now I'll reinsert the GFCI back into the box. There we go. Then overnight, I connected to the shore power, no trip. And 24 hours later, as you just saw, it's working perfectly. So it turned out to be a pretty easy solution that did not require replacing the GFCI. I guess it's good that I tried that first. It was 44 bucks, what the heck? But had it not fixed it with the last solution, then it could have been down the line in one of the other outlets. Knowing this now, if in the future it occurs and I can't solve it like I just did, I think I would go down the line and test the other outlets to see if they were properly wired together. Then to add insult to injury, the GFCI outlet that I replaced and corrected the wiring to some degree is tripping again with nothing plugged in. It will not reset. <sighs> Looks like I got material for another video. So, in my troubleshooting of why the GFCI keeps tripping, I was playing with this outlet here in the back of the van, and it started working again. Then it stopped. 
So I decided I need to inspect the inside and it's not easy to open. But I got it open and look what I found. Oh my God. Now the insulation has not been removed from the wires that are connected to each other just by pinching with those brass jaws. How do you know if there isn't a interrupted contact there, especially with the ground wires? Well, removing the paper insulation on the ground wires, twisting them together a little bit, and pushing down on the white and the black wires did nothing to change the GFCI tripping. And I even checked the continuity between the two white wires, the two black wires, and there is continuity, so they are, in fact, in contact with the gold clamp in the middle. So it's not this outlet that I can tell. Moving on to the next one. This outlet's behind the driver's seat. The same push-in configuration. Not gonna be easy to take apart. I already see a problem with this outlet box. The gray plastic assembly is not fully pushed into the outlet, so perhaps Fingers crossed, this is where the issue is. This may be the problem. The black wire is not even connected to the brass clamp. Also, the ground wire is not connected. I wonder if this has been worked on before. I'll just reconnect it and see what happens. After I removed the insulation from the black and white wires and the paper from the ground wire, I could not, for the life of me, press them back into those clamps there. To do it properly, you need to use a Wirecon insulation tool. Well, I don't have one, and there are none available at the local Home Depot. I'd have to order it online. So instead, using a long sheet metal screw, I was able to spread out those clamps just enough to push the wires in. In the process, it bulged out the plastic outlet box a little bit, so I will use some vice grips to squeeze it back together to tighten the wires up. I want to make sure they're not going to come out while putting them, there we go, back in. That looked pretty good. I think we're good to go. I need two hands here. There we go. Now it's snapped in place, unlike the way I found it. Looks good. All right, see if I can get it back in the hole. I hope the wires aren't coming off. <laughs> there we go. All right. Snap on the cover plate. Here we go. Let's hope that works. Now I'll inspect these two outlets that are in the entertainment center cabinet. These are the same compact RV outlets. Everything in one box. This one here is a loose, it shouldn't matter. I'll remove the outlets and see what they look like inside. Well, I thought the top outlet box was a culprit. Took forever to open it up. Yeah, it says press the tabs on the side to open it up. Well, how do you press it? I ended up using screwdrivers and other things to get it done. Left the paper insulation on the ground wires. You can't really tell if there's good connection in those clamps. It goes right through the insulation. What I can do is try to uh, test the continuity between the wires. Now I'm gonna check the outlet receptacle on the exterior of the van. I'm gonna take it out, see what's going on in there. The seal is a little suspicious. When I press on it, you can see there's some play there. It's more compressed on this side. A little bit of play. Aha, did I find the problem? Finally, let's open it up and see what's going on. The cover was held on by just one screw. Loosen up the screws. Well, another removal operation to open that up. 
Well, with Diane's help, I finally got the back off this thing. I didn't record it because there would be some words that I wouldn't want to have posted. I see no obvious visible issues here, but again, we've got the paper on the ground wires and we're pinching the, the hot and the neutral wires. Who knows how good those connections are. I'm gonna check continuity with my meter. Like the other receptacles, I removed the paper from around the copper ground. I don't think that makes a difference. After struggling with opening up several of the plastic outlets, I realized this was too much of a job and I gave up. The problem is, in order to heat up our coffee charger devices, use any AC in here for our entertainment center, we need AC power. The alternative, run an extension cord through the window. Kind of a little redneck. Anyway, I needed to come up with a temporary solution. And here's what I did. First, I disconnected the load side of the GFCI outlet. This outlet controls all of the outlets in the series. The top brass screws go to the load. The bottom ones go to the line. The line goes directly to the circuit breaker panel, so it gets direct AC power. By removing the load, all potential ground fault down line is removed, and it worked. What that does is gives me power to this single GFCI outlet. Using connectors and wire nuts, I secured the wires that went to the load. They're just basically dead wires at this point. So, question is, how do I connect this to the items I need to power up? Well, I'll show you what I did next. I powered up the 110 AC with the Volta system. Let's check the GFCI. Well, it's working. Reset. Perfect. At least now I can power up my devices. So I needed to come up with a temporary solution, maybe semi-permanent. A main extension cord. First and foremost is to get power to the entertainment center, to the TV, the sound bar. So I ran this extension cord up towards that direction and decided, hmm, rather than run it through the inside of the cabinet via the door, how about where the opening is for the cable run? Remove the cover plate and threaded it through. And this is what I got. So I fed the extension cord through that port and connected the TV and the sound bar. That works. And it's hidden inside the cabinet. Perfect. Turns out this flaw of the unlevel bed platform there's a gap here, and I was able to thread the wire through without pinching it. Otherwise, I would have threaded it outside of the bed frame. If Paulsbo RV informs me that locating the ground fault is going to be a timely and expensive repair, I just might keep it as is and work at finding the ground fault myself over time.